Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video I will be deriving the mean and variance of the negative binomial distribution by making use of its relation to the geometric distribution and its related properties. So let's remind ourselves of the geometric distribution. If you're not too familiar with the geometric distribution, I recommend you check out the link I will be posting in the top right hand corner over there. So, if we have a random variable x that follows the geometric distribution, and we have xi, where we have each xi being an iid, geometric random variable, so that means an independent, identically distributed random variable. And we have i equal to 1, 2, all the way up to r. So we have r xi's. Then if we let y be equal to the summation from i is 1 all the way to r of xi, then y will follow the negative binomial distribution with r successes and P being the success probability. So we know that the geometric distribution is a special case of the binomial. So if we have of the negative binomial, if we have R being equal to one, then that is essentially the same as a geometric distribution with the success probability of P. So we are summing R independent, identically distributed geometric random variables and that is generating the, dist the negative binomial distribution with R successes and P being the probability of success. So what's the expected value of Y? The expected value of Y is equal to the expected value of the summation from I is one to R of XI. And we can write this, if we expand this summation just to show ourselves, it's the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xr. And we know that expectation is linear, so that's equal to the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus all the way up to the expected value of xr. And if a random variable x follows the geometric distribution, the expected value of x is going to be equal to 1 over p. The variance of x is equal to 1 over p over p squared, if x is the number of trials until we reach our first success. So just a reminder, x is the number, counts the number of trials till the first success. Okay, then this will be the expected value of x and the variance of x. And since each xi follows that same geometric distribution as x does, and we know the expected value of any xi, let's say of x1, is equal to 1 over p. That will be the same as the expected value of x2 all the way up to xr. And the variances are the same. Each variance is equal to each other with 1 over p over p squared being the value of that variance. So going back to the expected value, we know that it's the sum of our expected values of a geometric distribution, which is equal to, so we know that's 1 over p plus 1 over p plus 1 over p. And since there are r such terms, there are r of them, it's equal to r over p. And this is the same as the mean for a negative binomial distribution, as showed in the video covering the introduction to the negative binomial distribution. So the, what we are using here is we're using the fact that each xi is iid geometric. So we can, so we know that each expected value evaluates to one over p, and we're using the fact that some the expected value is is linear in in uh, its operation. So the summation of all of these terms, the expected value of them is equal to the expected value of the individual one, the sum of the individual ones, and there are r of these terms that we're summing together. So we know that that resolves to r. The P. So let's get to the variance. The variance of Y is going to be equal to the variance of the summation from I is 1 to R of XI. Now, the variance of a sum is equal to the sum of the variances 
and we need to account for the summation of the covariances between these terms. Well, we need to do that, but we need to remember something as well. Our xi's are distributed independently and identically as geometric random variables with a success probability of p. That means that the variance of x1 plus x2 is equal to the variance of x1 plus x2. There is, the covariances are zero. The independence implies that the covariance of x1 and x2 are equal to zero. So that means that these diagonal terms in the variance covariance matrix, so if we have sigma 1, 1 squared, sigma 2, 2 squared, sigma 1, 2 squared, sigma 2, 1 squared, these of the diagonals are all equal to the variances because it's sigma squared, so it's variance of x1 plus variance of x2. The off diagonal terms, or these terms that are not on, the, on this leading diagonal, they're going to be equal to zero. So we know that the variance of sum, of the sum, is going to be equal to the summation from i is one to r of the variance of the x i. And we know that this holds only if and only if all x i are independent. So if all of these xi in, are independent, then we can say that the variance of the summation is equal to the summation of the individual variances. And this variance of the sum is equal to the, the sum of the variances, which is equal to the summation from i is 1 to r of variance of xi. Let's take just the variance of x1. That's 1 over p times p squared, uh, uh, divided by p squared, 1 over p over p squared. So that is equal to r times 1 minus p of a p squared and that's how we derive the variance of the negative binomial distribution as simple as that if we know that the that the link between the geometric distribution and the negative binomial distribution then we can easily derive its mean and variances if we have a bit of extra knowledge about independence so that we can so that we know that the covariances are zero and that allows us to say that the variance of the sum is equal to the sum of the variances. And we need to know that expected value is linear. So this expectation is linear in operation, so we can just take the sum of the individual expectations. So if you're familiar with a geometric distribution, you can easily work out the properties of the negative binomial distribution by making use of this definition over here, or by using the moment generating function of the geometric distribution and using some properties of moment generating functions to derive the moment generating function for the negative binomial distribution. That's what I will be showing you how to do in the next video. That concludes it for this current video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has furthered your understanding of the negative binomial distribution and of probability theory as a whole. Thank you very much for watching. Boer Commander out.